The goal of this video is to show you how to implement the earth center inertial to latitude and longitude coordinates transformation function so you can plug it into your own version of orbit propagator. Once you have this implemented, I encourage you to experiment with the orbital elements to see how they affect the ground tracks. And in the next video, I'll be going into details of how the ground tracks are affected by each element and how you can estimate the orbital elements from looking at a ground track. So this is the 33rd video in the series, and this one I'm going to be going over the Python functions that you need in order to calculate the latitude longitude coordinates. And again, as I've gone over in the previous videos, this is the whole algorithm of how to do this transformation. So you want to propagate in the inertial frame, then we want to rotate all those coordinates into the earth centered earth fixed frame using this function called spice uh, from spice called spice.px form, where you give it the frame that you're coming from, the frame that you want to go to, and then whatever timestamp is associated with that transformation, which will give you a rotation matrix. And you can use that to actually calculate the earth center earth fixed uh, position vector. And then from there, once you have that vector, you can convert it from rectangular to spherical coordinates to get to latitude and longitude coordinates. And then again, this rotation matrix, which is what you're getting from spice.px form, is this rotation matrix that takes you from ECI to earth centered earth fixed and then you're gonna do matrix vector multiplication with the vector that you have from your inertial frame and then that will get you the earth centered earth fixed vector that you need. And then an update on the spice kernels because there's one more spice kernel that you need in order to be able to predict the earth's orientation in the future. Um, so basically JPL has the spice kernels and then if you want really high quality or high precision data, uh, they post new kernels twice a week. Uh, so if you really need near term, really high precision data, you can use that. Or they also have other kernels that can predict the orientation of Earth in the future for quite a bit of time. Uh, this one is for roughly 100 years here, which is the one that I use. Um, you can use the other one if you'd like, if you'd like to update it super frequently. And they also have really high precision historical data because it already happened. And because there's going to be a new kernel that you need, you're going to have to, have to update the solar system meta kernel, and then I'll show that when I get to the Python. So here's where you can find uh, the meta kernels for figuring out what Earth's rotation is going to be. Um, they have a bunch of stuff in here, and not just this is all the physical data. So there's Earth's orientation uh, in these, and then there's also other ones like um, this one has the gravitational parameters for a bunch of the bodies in the solar system, or basically a lot of the bodies in the solar system, so you can use that. So I'm gonna go into the readme here, the readme text which kind of explains what's going on here. So basically this is a readme text that they have in there, uh, which explains the binary Earth PCKs, which basically just gives a bunch of physical data uh, for a bunch of bodies in the solar system, but specifically for the Earth, you can take, they have a bunch of the orientation data. So as I say here, they have a high accuracy uh, model that is updated twice per week, which they explain what the what the naming convention is for that. But then there's this other one that I have here that I use that goes from for a very long time. So basically, the convention that they use here is this starts at 2020, so 2020 January January zero one first month of the year and zero one day of the month, which is the first day, and this will go to, until 2099 June 28th. So basically, this is a kernel that I need. Um, or that I use for what I have here and then what I'll show you in this video. But then if you want a high accuracy historical kernel, so if you want to look in the past, they have this one right here. So that's basically what they have going on there. And now going into the Python, I'm going to start from basically the main function. So basically I showed in the previous video a ground track plot where I have just one uh, low Earth orbit at 40 degrees and one at 89.9, basically 90 degrees, and this is how you kind of go about it. Um, so once you have this implemented, it's actually super easy to use in the main scripts because you can just define your codes, define your orbit propagator, calculate it lat longs, you don't have to worry about it. And I just did this to show that, um, say for the 40 degree one, the max latitude you're gonna have is 40, and the min you're gonna have is negative 40. And then you can just plot it with the ground tracks that I've shown in the previous video. And I'll have links in the description to all the previous videos. So getting into orbit propagator, it's actually again super simple, just adding a bunch of layers of abstraction. So from the main script, all you have to do is say calc lat longs. And then from orbit propagator, all you have to say is inert to lat long. So basically, once you've propagated your orbit, you have all your inertial position vectors, and from there, you want to calculate the lat long from that. So then you pass in your inertial position vectors, whatever time span that you have, um, which is ephemeris time from seconds from J2000, which I've gone over pre 
with a previous video. Again, I'll put the link in the description. And then whatever frame you're propagating in, which is most likely gonna be the Earth equatorial frame, which is in Spice, just J2000, just like that. So that's all you have to do. And then you're gonna go ahead and store the lat longs. The This is the position vectors in the Earth center, Earth fix, if you want. And then I just left this blank, uh, but I also return the rotation matrices for each time step, if you want that. Um, so then moving into the tools file, First, you want to convert from inertial to earth centered earth fix, which is this function right here. And then you want to convert, and then, so, so oh wait, basically you want to convert from inertial to lat long, but first you have to convert from inertial to earth fixed. So first we're gonna go over this function here. So what you're passing in is your inertial state vectors or your initial precision vectors, your time span, whatever frame you're using, and as default, I just have this J2000. And then don't worry about this file names. This is just something I use for the animations that I make. Um, you don't have to worry about it. So basically, you wanna get how many steps you're gonna do because you wanna pre-allocate all the memory using the MP.0. So you wanna pre-allocate -all pre the, the arrays in the memory. So for the Cs, these are all the rotation matrices you're going to have whatever amount of steps that you have, say you have a thousand time steps and then three by three because it's a three by three rotation matrix. And then you have your earth center, earth fixed uh, position vectors, which is just gonna be the same shape as what you pass in here as your inertial vectors. Um, so they, again, that's like a thousand and three. So this could be something like 1000 steps and each one has three values in it because Rx, Ry, Rz. So then for each step, you wanna calculate what your rotation matrix is gonna be, again, using the spice.px form, where it's the frame that you're coming from, which is a J2000 uh, most of the time, the frame you wanna to go to, which is ITRF93. Now, I'll, I'll put a link in the description of what this means, but basically this is the Earth-centered, Earth-fixed frame. This is how they have it defined in spice. Um, ITRF, there's a whole other thing. I'll put a link in the description because it's pretty interesting how they define it. And then you want whatever timestamp that you have. So for each step, just index into the time span array. And then in order to convert that into the inertial or the earth centered earth fixed position vector, you just need to do the mp dot dot, which basically this is just the matrix vector multiplication that will convert um, your inertial state vector like this to the earth center earth fixed, which is using this rotation matrix that you get from PX form. So that's how you do that. And for each step you do that, and then don't worry about the file names. And then from that return your earth center earth fixed vectors and then all the rotation matrices that you have. So once you have that, you go into the inertial to lat long, which is kind of doing the whole thing, where again, you're passing in your inertial vectors, your time span, frame, file names, all the same thing. So this is something, it'll make it more readable if I have steps here. So again, getting all your steps, getting your lat longs, you're just pre-allocating that memory and it's three per one because you need your latitude, your longitude and your radial distance, which is the norm of the position vector. So you get all your earth center, earth fixed vectors and your rotation matrices from the function that I just explained above right here. So you're just calling that from there and you just pass in all these arguments straight through. And then for each step, again, you get the norm of the radial vector, your longitude, latitude, using the spice.reclat function, rectangular to latitude basically is kind of how they're abbreviating abbreviating, and I'll post a link in the description to the documentation for these functions in SpicyPy. And then all you have to pass in is your Earth-centered Earth fixed vector, because all it's doing is converting from X, Y, Z rectangular coordinates to spherical coordinates. That's all that's happening there. And then you're just going to store it in this already allocated vector or matrix array right here and you're just storing R2D, it's just radians to degrees because it's gonna give you a value back in radians. So if you want it in degrees, just convert it to degrees and then getting the R norm. I don't really use this, but I just still return it just in case. And then again, you're returning all your lat longs, which is this array right here. You're, and then you're also returning the earth centered earth fixed vectors and the rotation matrices if you want that. I mean, you can use this as another function as well. So that's how it's used here in Orbit Propagator where you get your lat longs, your earth center earth fix, and if you wanted the rotation matrices. And then also real quick to go over the 
the solar system kernel. So basically this is the spice kernel that you load and the main function uh, just has the latest sleep seconds like usual du432.s.bsp is a solar system ephemeris file and this is that new one that this um, this is a new kernel that is going to predict the orientation of earth uh, for 100 years so and then that's how you use it and again going back to this i can explain um so you're just adding to the path where all the python tools are like orbit propagator tools.py you want to import spicy pi and then you want to import all the personal tools again because you added that to the path. You do this, get the city list if you'd like to go ahead and show that. And the first thing you want to do is do this. Oh, and then you also have to find the initial date. This is important because Earth, Earth's orientation is a function of time. So you need to define at what time you actually want this. So then you're just going to furnish with spice that solar system metakernel file to get all three of those files just furnished at once. So you only need one, one command and define your codes or propagator all that so yeah so that's it for the spice and let's get back to here and then with that main function is how i made this plot so that's what it looks like so this is a 40 degree orbit like this going like that and again it's 40 degrees inclination so at the top of its orbit the most north it gets is 40 degrees latitude the most south is negative 40 latitude and the other one is a polar orbit so it goes to 90 to negative 90 and it does all that and then again this is it for this video uh be sure to give me a like if you like the video to help me out with the youtube algorithm and then the next video i'm going to be going over the relationships of each individual orbital element with the ground track. So basically I want to give an intuitive understanding of how altering each element will affect the ground track of a satellite. So again, that's it for this video. Uh, let me know in the questions in the comments and thank you for watching.